Number one tells us to select all points where a relative minimum occurs on the graph. So remember, a relative minimum means that the points or the graph on either side of the point are going to be a higher value. Okay, so that point is the lowest point right next to it. So for A, A is not a relative minimum because we have graph below it on this right hand side. So that wouldn't be a minimum. B is a minimum because on either side, the graph is above that point. So this is a minimum. C would not be a minimum. D would not be a minimum. E is a minimum on either side. The graph is a little bit higher than it. So that one's good. F is not a minimum. G is not a minimum because there's points below it here. H is not a minimum because there's points below it here. Number two, add one term to the polynomial expression, to this polynomial expression, to make it a 22nd degree polynomial. So you just need to add a term that has um, an exponent of 22. So any x to the 22nd polynomial you want, okay? So if you want it to just be x to the 22nd, you can. You could put 1 half x to the 22nd. You could put negative 4 x to the 22nd. Okay, just add in an x to the 22nd polynomial and then, or sorry, monomial, and then add um, the rest of these in. Number three, identify um, the degree, the leading coefficient, and the constant value for each of the following polynomials. Um, so the degree is going to be the highest value of the exponent that you see. Okay, so let's go ahead and identify the degree in each of these. So we look to the exponents and the highest one is where we get the degree. So the degree here is 3, highest degree in B. Okay, so highest exponent is 4. And then the highest exponent in C is also 4. Okay, it doesn't have to be it written in standard form. So even if that term comes somewhere in the middle of the polynomial, that highest degree um, or that highest exponent is the degree. So then when we do the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient um, is the number in front of that highest degree term. So this one is just 1x cubed. So the leading coefficient is 1. This one is 2x to the 4th, so the lead coefficient is 2. This one is positive 3x to the 4th, so the leading coefficient is 3. And then the constant term is the number without a variable with it, so the one that does not have a variable with it. So in this case, 8. In this one, 1. And in this one, negative 4.4. Number four, we want to make an open top box by cutting out the corners of a square piece of cardboard and folding up the sides. The cardboard starts as a 9 by 9 square. The volume in cubic inches of the open box is a function of, a, of the side length x from the square cutouts. Okay, so let's just draw a little... Um, diagram of this. So we're starting with um, this square. So each side is nine inches on this square. And then we're going to cut out um, little squares from each corner. And actually, I'm going to um, fill this in. So we're going to cut these out. So we're going to do these cutouts in each corner. And then you're going to fold this box up. So think of this as as blank space here. So now that white space is your paper. So then you're going to fold this box up um, along these like lines here. And then you're not going to have a top to it, but so we've got that open box here. So now we're just going to call these cutouts um, X and we're cutting out the same amount in each corner. So these are each X by X squares. So then this leftover, um, and that's going to become the height because when you fold it up, this part will be the height of your box. 
So when we're doing the volume, okay, we need to multiply um, the by the height. Okay, so we're going to do area of the base times the height. So that height is x. Then we also need to multiply by the area of this base. So we need the length of this segment here. Okay, so the length of this, remember it started at 9 inches because this whole thing is the 9. And then we're going to subtract off or cut out 2x's. So this is going to be 9 minus 2x, whatever the x's are. So then to find the area, and that's going to be both of these sides since it's a square. So this, this is also 9 minus 2x. So for area of that base, we're just going to multiply 9 minus 2x times 9 minus 2x. Okay, because we would do base times height here for the area of that. So we're going to do 9 minus 2x times 9 minus 2x and then times x for the height. So there's our um, volume equation. So what would the volume be if x was 1? So now we're just going to plug in 1 everywhere we see x. So we would type in, or we'd plug in 1 for that. We'd do 9 minus 2 times 1, and then 9 minus 2 times 1. Oops. So this is going to be 1 times 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. So then multiply those together. So the volume, if x was 1, would be 49 um, inches cubed. Then what is a reasonable domain for the volume in this case? Um, so we wouldn't want our cutout to go more than, it couldn't go more than halfway. You can't cut out more than half of this 9. So if we do 9 divided by 2, that gives us how far we're allowed to cut. And so anywhere between um, 0 and 4.5. Number five, consider the polynomial function P given by this, evaluate it for um, X equals negative three. So I'm just gonna take this polynomial function, okay, and everywhere I see an X, I'm just gonna put a parenthesis. So seven times something cubed minus two times something squared plus three times something plus 10. And now the something that they want us to plug in this time is negative three. So then we'll do negative 3 cubed here, negative 3 squared, negative 3. And then we'll evaluate. Um, so this is going to be 7 times a negative 3 cubed. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Okay, and then we have minus 2 times negative 3 squared is positive 9. And then we can multiply 3 and negative 3 together is negative 9, and we still have that plus 10. So then um, 7 times negative 27 is negative 189 for this part. And then negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. You've got negative 9 and positive 10 here. So then just um, do negative 189 minus 18 minus 9 plus 10, and you get that P of negative 3 equals negative 206. All right, then last one is talking about an open top box. Again, starts with an 11 by 17 inch piece of paper. Um, in this case, they're giving us the equation down here at the bottom, so we don't have to come up with it ourselves. And then all they want us to do is rewrite the equation by expanding the polynomial. So this means we're going to multiply out this polynomial. So you could um, multiply a couple different ways. Um, so you might multiply, and I'm going to do both ways. So feel free to listen to whichever one you like better. Um, so one way is to make a two by two box. So we're going to start by multiplying these two. Well, I'm going to start by multiplying these two polynomials together. So I'm going to multiply 17x minus 2x times 11, 11 minus 2x. So I'm going to make a 2 by 2 box and put my binomial, okay, the first binomial on this side and the second binomial on this side. Okay, so I'm multiplying these two together first. 
So then we'll multiply um, to get what multiplies into each box. So 11 times 17 will be our first box of 187. 17 times negative 2x is negative 34x. 11 times negative 2x is negative 22x. And then negative 2x times negative 2x is positive 4x squared. Then we see that these are like terms. So when we go ahead and take this out, we're going to have 187. Add these together. So negative 22 plus negative 34 is negative 56x. And then we have the 4x squared. So that's what we get when we multiply those two polynomials together. Then we still have um, this x to multiply in. So then I'll just distribute this x into each of these three terms and get the expanded version. So v of x equals 187x minus 56x squared plus 4x cubed. So that's one way if you like to multiply um, with the box. If you like to multiply by just um, distributing or doing what some people call the FOIL method, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to write out this polynomial again. So first, I'm just going to multiply these binomials together. And we do that by distributing the um, 17 to both terms. So we're going to multiply it times 11, which is 187. And then we're going to do 17 times negative 2x, which is negative 34x. This is what we did right here. Then we're going to distribute in the negative 2x to both terms. So we're going to do negative, two time, negative 2x times 11 is negative 22x. And then negative 2x times negative 2x is positive 4x squared. So then that's going to be those binomials times each other. And then don't forget you still have this x. So then when we um, simplify this, we have like terms here. So we have um, 187, negative 34x and negative 22x is that negative 56x. And then we have the 4x squared. And then we still need to multiply by x here. So we'll distribute this in to get our final polynomial of 187x plus, I'm sorry, minus 56x squared and then plus 4x cubed. So whichever way you like to do your multiplication um, is fine.